Hi there everyone, today we're at the Oxford University Museum of Natural History. I'm with the Zoology Collection Manager, Mark Carnell. This is an amazing museum, you must visit. They've got all this incredible stuff on public display. There was a queue outside when we got here, people couldn't wait to get inside. But here behind the scenes, there's even more amazing stuff. And what we want to show you today is in this cupboard here. Mark, are you going to open it for us? Yes, I will, yeah. All right. This will be a very short video if you don't open it. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. So, uh, in this cupboard here is part of the founding collections of the museum and some of the earliest material that formed what was originally the Ashmolean Museum. And so, we can trace this material back to 1650. So, this is like the first stuff when the museum was nowhere near the size it is today. Yeah. These were the crown jewels of the collection. Well, this was the only collection, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So, when the Ashmolean Museum was opened in the 1680, it, it really had everything uh, in it in natural history art, ethnography, sculpture, and at the time natural history was really, really important to kind of trying to work out what was happening with the world. So a lot of these were the first known examples that were kind of collected and brought from all over the world and put on show at the original museum. Spoiler alert everyone, the thing I cannot wait to show you is in that box. But before we open that box, and you should be excited, Let's have a look at some of these other things because all of this stuff looks really amazing. What's this? Come on. <laughs> That's a bladderfish or a porcupine fish. And it's just the inflated skin. It's really rare to have material of this age. So again, going back to 1650, because this is just organic skin, so it kind of gets eaten. One of the weirder ones is this thing here. So this is an elephant's tail. And you can kind of see here how it was originally listed. So it's an elephant's tail with a Y. Okay. This collection is called the Tredescant Collection, and it was put together by John Tredescant the Younger and Elder, and this was back in the 17th century. So they were still really trying to work out what was natural and what wasn't. So alongside these guys, in the 1650 catalogue of this collection, are listed things like dragon's eggs and phoenix tails, uh, and also lots of kind of uh, monstrous specimens were collected, and that's perhaps why we have some examples like this four-horned kind of ram in the collection. Enough's enough. Let's open the box. I know you're all really excited. This is probably one of the most <laughs> famous museum objects in the UK, maybe even the world. I'm uh, yeah, I'd say top 10, definitely. Top 10. Can I at least carry the box? Yes, you can, yeah. This is amazing. I dare not even open the box, Mark. You do the honours for us. So in these two boxes here, we have the only dodo soft tissue anywhere in the world. In here, we have a skull with the skin on the other side. This is the skin that's been removed from that side of the skull. So there. that skin came off that side of the yeah. skull? Yeah, so that was removed to have a look inside in the 1840s. So on the other side of this specimen, we have the skin still in its original position. There we go. Skin still on the bone yeah. of a dodo bird. There is a certain smell when you open the box. Is that <laughs> is that the skin or is that something to do with the preservation? Uh, I'm immune to museum smells now, but uh, it, it might be the, uh, the smell of awe and wonder. <laughs> You're smelling there? I, I am a little bit in awe, so maybe it is. <laughs> yeah, maybe but I don't think it is the smell of awe. It's just a, I don't know, maybe it's just a museum-y smell. Now, you've probably heard of the dodo bird. It is extinct, of course. It's surely the most famous extinct animal. Just give us the quick history of the dodo. So in 1599, Dutch sailors kind of land on Mauritius and these birds called the dodo are found there. And then essentially within 100 years, the dodo was extinct. So we don't know where this one came from. And when we first find it in the, the catalog of the Tredescan collection in 1650, it just says dodo from Mauritius. Because of the interest and the rarity of this material, it's kind of been at the forefront of scientific research. So every time a new analytical technique was developed, at some point somebody's applied it to the dodo. So that kind of started with the dissections and when the skin was removed off in the 1840s. It did have feathers on the head which were removed and looked under the microscope through to kind of tissue sampling and genetics. And then of course today we've got a whole suite of kind of scanning and other visualisation techniques and some of those have been applied to the dodo. We have got this second box. Yeah, so here we have the foot skeleton and associated with it is the the other soft tissue that we have left of the dodo, which is the scales that were removed from the foot. So even dodo bone is super rare, isn't it? Yeah, so there are only three museums in the world, including this one, that have any recent dodo bones. That's kind of not fossilised. So the, the head and the foot here make up a significant amount of the skeletal material that we have. Mark, I remember as a boy going to museums and seeing what I thought was stuffed dodo birds with feathers. In fact, here at your museum, yeah. you have a lovely sort of model of what looks like a stuffed dodo bird to yeah. me. Clearly, if this is the only living tissue of a dodo in the world, I wasn't looking at stuffed dodo birds. What have I been looking at all these years? What you've been seeing is because uh, dodos are such an icon for extinction, uh, is that the museums want to show what the animal looked like. Uh, and so what you've been seeing is models 
And then any skeletons that you see in museums, they tend to be very brown in colour, and that would be because they're either, again, models or composites of much, much older fossil material that was found on Mauritius. So not much in the kind of window we're looking at between the 1600s and 1700s. But the museum isn't just about old stuff, is it? No, one of the most common questions we get is, do you still collect? So there's this idea that uh, we're just kind of a, a shuttered historic collection and we have thousands, tens of thousands of specimens a year to uh, the museum collection. And I can show you some of the most recent material that we've got in, in terms of the biological collection. Okay, so now here we are in Mark's office. We've got this set of drawers, this big black box. This is the new stuff, is it, Mark? Yeah, so we went from some of the oldest material in the museum to some of the newest material. This kind of looks unassuming. This is an amazing local collection of mollusks of Oxfordshire. May I hold them? Yeah, of course, yeah. So these are mollusks of all shapes and sizes that have been collected around the county of Oxfordshire. Yeah, so a man called Arthur Spriggs, who was a doctor, he spent a lot of time kind of travelling around the county to different environments and collecting all the mollusks that he could. And these specimens form the basis of a kind of atlas of mollusks of Oxfordshire. So these are really important specimens because in the future when people are trying to work out, OK, what's the range, where do these guys live, what's the habitat, they'll find data points for all of these specimens and then ideally they come to the museum to kind of check identifications and things like that. What we'll be doing with this collection is cataloguing each of these, so checking the identifications, recording exactly where as precisely as we can that these things came from, taking images of them to make them available. So the idea is that any researcher who might be interested in mollusk fauna of Oxfordshire will be able to find this collection via the museum, via the museum website, and come and use it. We're here to be used, that's the idea of these collections behind the scenes, not kind of sitting on them like a dragon and hoarding all this amazing treasure. So if you go to the Oxford University Museum of Natural History website or Twitter, it's actually called More Than a Dodo because they want people to know, well, it's not just about that dodo we looked at downstairs. And this is the proof that not only are there loads and loads of things here, there's new things coming in all the time and things that will be used for scientific research. Thanks for watching this video. For a bit more from our dodo bird interview, there'll be a link in the video description and here on the screen. Also, our thanks to 23andMe for supporting this video. 23andMe is an online genetic service that helps you learn about what the 23 chromosomes that make up your DNA can tell you about your ancestry, traits, and health. To help with scientific research and discoveries and learn your own personal DNA story, go to 23andMe.com objectivity. Again, link in the video description.